So today let's talk about a vintage haircut and how we can go from this to this in just a few minutes. Hello, welcome to Lady in Waking. If you have never been here before, my name is Ashley. I am 47 years old and I am a vintage enthusiast, pop culture geek, trying to pull my vintage style into my 40s without feeling too matronly. That's kind of the journey that I'm on right now. If that sounds interesting to you, then feel free to click subscribe, like the video, all of that good stuff, and then that will keep the videos coming to you. Also, if you're interested in vintage style, vintage techniques, we'll also be doing that here as well. So today, what we're going to be talking about is my new haircut. I actually just got my haircut into what I would consider to be my perfect haircut for vintage style. Um, I have done this exact haircut in varying lengths over the years and it has always worked out well for me. So I have a girl who knows what I want and I go to her every single week, every single time I get my haircut, I go to her. Um, but the main thing that I always feel like is important when it comes to vintage haircuts and vintage friendly haircuts is layers. Layers um, and then the hair falling sort of in a gradual U shape. Now. A traditional vintage haircut from the 1940s and 50s, or really the 1940s, um, was called the midi, and you may have seen various videos about that here on YouTube, but what the midi was was basically a cut that was layered and it was the same length all over. In the 80s, I believe it was referred to as the Vidal Sasson Halo, but that style of haircut is very, very specific. It has a very rocking kind of rock and roll look, sort of Joan Jett look whenever it's dry. And then when you set it in a vintage style, it ends up looking more like Marilyn Monroe or actually closer to maybe um, the traditional midi was four inch length layers. So it really ended up looking more like maybe something like Myrna Loy would have worn. Um, the thing about the traditional midi, and I have done that before on my prior channel, Lisa Fremont Street, um, I, it, it's, it's a haircut that I did specifically for the channel to kind of showcase how you can ask your stylist for a midi haircut. However, the way that I look at it right now is the midi is not the best haircut for my type when it comes to vintage style because it ends up being very, very feathery thin along the bottom. My hair is very straight and very fine and so it tends to fall, the set tends to fall out. Even if I set it in a wet set, it tends to fall out. It tends to look a little bit more feathered. Um, so I've kind of settled on a haircut that is sort of a cross between just a traditional layered haircut and a midi. So that's what it looks, this is what it looks like dry. I had her cut it a little bit shorter this time because I wanted to give it a little extra time to grow. My hair tends to grow really, really fast. And so I have to end up getting it cut too often if I don't cut it shorter. Um, but you can kind of see how that the shorter layers on the side here cause the hair to fall into sort of a U shape. Now I don't have a traditional horseshoe shape, which that is another vintage cut that is very popular. It's more indicative of the 50s, but that style, that vintage, that um, horseshoe haircut I have also done on my prior channel. It does not work as well for my hair either because without a lot more layering in my hair like throughout, it tends to uh, be very bottom heavy. So although that works great for um, like page boy styles and things like that, the styles that I tend to like are a little bit more waterfall waves. So it just doesn't work as well if I do a, a full horseshoe. So I like to do something that's kind of, kind of a cross between a horseshoe and a midi. This is what it looks like. This is how it moves. Traditionally, girls don't do it with bangs. Um, it's, you know, if you want, if you are not somebody who likes to wear bangs on your, for your everyday style or when you've got your hair up, then you can, of course, have your shortest layer be this layer and you will still get the same sort of lift and volume at the base or at the roots and that same sort of, um, of S curve with the shorter layers. So this is what it looks like dry. Um, I'm going to show you a little video here to show you how long my hair was, uh, maybe a photo or two, but my hair was very long. It was longer than I've had it in a while and I just realized, even though I kind of liked how it looked long, the older I get, the more thin it feels, the more limp it seems to be, the longer it gets. So I'm just going to stay away from long hair right now 
for the foreseeable future. Um, if I want long hair, I will just do extensions and we may do some videos soon with some extensions, but my hair was like this. <laughs> And I've deepened the color up just a little bit since I took that video, but that just kind of shows you what it looked like before. Um, I don't typically have her style it because in all honesty, I'm never going to wear this straight. That is another thing to remember. If you go in with a commitment to this sort of a layered style, if you don't like how it looks unset, unstyled, um, then I wouldn't go for it. I would do something that you like the way it looks when it's just wash and wear because if you have a style that you feel like you just need to set it in order for it to look good, sometimes that's not going to work out, work out and you're going to end up going out and feeling uncomfortable with the style that you have. So I don't ever wear this like this. If I set it, I tend to like second, third day hair will still have some wave to it. I might wear it out then. But if I don't set it, I just tend to just throw it into a ponytail because it's just not a style that I enjoy. Um, I mean, it's fine right now when I'm at home, <laughs> but it's just not a style I tend to enjoy on average just for going out and about. It's not my thing. So I'll show you the way I do like it. I'm about to set it with some hot sticks. I'm going to set my bangs off my face so that we can kind of take away from that whole aesthetic since a lot of people don't prefer bangs. And um, you'll just kind of see the way that it looks just set on hot sticks. It looks much better wet set, but the hot sticks will give you a general idea of what it will end up looking like. So we'll come right back. Makeup today will not be suitable for the look. It will not be a vintage specific look. This look is actually, um, I just did this as sort of a practice session. I am trying to get back into freelance. And so I just started playing around with some old tutorials. I think this one was from 2010, a Jaclyn Hill tutorial, but I just wanted to kind of play around with some more modern uh, makeup because that's more than likely what I'll be doing when I do freelance. So yeah, makeup will not suit the look, but we'll just play around with it and see what we get. So I'm starting with clean, dry hair, and I am going to spray each section. Uh, we're actually going to spray it all over with a little bit of the Tresemme Heat Tamer Spray first, just as sort of a heat protectant. And then I'm going to take the um, my hairspray, which is the Kenra Volume 25, and I'm going to spray each section, small sections, from the crown down. Um, and I'm going to spray it a little bit before I roll my hair just to give it a little more grip since my hair is so slick when it's clean. And I'm going to use the larger rollers on the top and then I'm using the little skinny rollers all over the bottom of my head. And I tend to have to use duckbill clips on the joints of the smaller rollers just simply because they do tend to um, pop open after a little while. So again, I'm using the small rollers on the bottom and the larger rollers on the top, and then I'm gonna let my hair cool down completely. Um, and I did notice that some of these rollers did not take um, the, or the, uh, they seem to cool down a little bit more than typical. So some of these didn't take as well as I hope they would, but it should still give you a general idea of how it's going to fall when it is set properly. So I'm gonna unroll all of the cooled rollers and then I'm just going to brush it through with my curl shaper brush and you can kind of see that the top sections um, took a little better than the bottom section. So that's it. Um, it's not perfect because again heated rollers and not all of them took either. I noticed that a couple of them were kind of cool so these, this roller set might be dying a little bit but it gives you a general idea of how that the cut really does the work for you. You don't really have to do hardly anything to it except curl it. You can curl it with whatever method you desire and it's still going to kind of fall in a retro shape because of the cut itself. So this is what I consider to be an ideal cut for me. It doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the perfect cut for you. If, if you've got color or not color, if you've got curl in your hair, you may find that a more traditional midi with a few more just layers or a horseshoe cut would work better for you. But for me, it works better to have layers throughout, but mostly around the bottom and to try to keep a little bit of weight on the bottom, but not too much. So hopefully that helps those of you who asked about a vintage haircut. And I will show you what this looks like with a proper vintage setting coming up next week. And we'll see you next time.